Today you are here this morning because of the divine appointment. You are not here by chance. I feel that very strongly in my spirit. What you are going to hear today is going to change your life. How many of you believe? How many of you believe? If you believe, say loud hallelujah. hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Therefore keep your hearts and mind open to the infallible word of God. For the last three weeks, I've been sharing with you on the subject, divine delays. But today I'm urged with the Lord to talk to you something about dealing with your delays. It's something totally different. God wants each one of us to deal with our delays. Amen. To be very precise, God wants to deal with with the delay the devil is trying to bring in your life. The Lord wants to speak to you so that you will understand how to resist the delay the devil brings in the lives of God's people. And so the title for this morning's message is Dealing with Your Delays. Now listen to this teaching very intently. And I know today's message is a prophetic message from the Lord. Turn your Bibles to a key text recorded in Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 3. Amen. Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 3. We're going to do something this morning. We are going to resist the devil who is trying to bring in delays in various areas of your life and God is going to break those demonic delays in your life if you believe you will see the glory of God Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 3 for the vision is at for an appointed time it hurries toward the goal and it will not fail though it delays wait for it because it will surely come. And it will not tarry. It will not delay long. Church, we must understand there are two invisible kingdoms working against each other. The kingdom of God and the kingdom of Satan. We were all once under the kingdom of Satan. Kingdom of darkness. But praise God. When you accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ had delivered you from the kingdom of darkness, delivered you from the kingdom of Satan, and translated you and me into the kingdom of his dear Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. We read in Colossians chapter 1 and verse 13 and 14. Colossians chapter 1 verses 13 and 14 who had delivered us from the power of darkness and had translated us into the kingdom of his dear son in whom we have redemption through his blood even the forgiveness of sin. Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Now for the last three weeks we studied about the divine delays. Yes, we believe that God has appointed a glorious time for each one of us. Bible often teaches us to wait upon the Lord for His appointed time, Moidim. 
Now, if God delays something in our life, it's for a glorious purpose. Why did the Lord Jesus Christ delay in the case of Lazarus? How many of you remember the two things we studied? The reason why Jesus delayed in the case of Lazarus. How many of you remember? What's number one? Number one, for the glory of God. Number two? In order to strengthen the faith of his disciples. Amen. The faith of the disciples should be strengthened. Now if God allows a delay, it means he's waiting for you and me to do something. In God's delay, there is a process of power, promise, and purity. Divine delays we gladly accept because it is for our best. In this process of divine delay, God is working on you and me. I need to yield myself to divine delay. In that process, God equips us. God trains us. God prepares us. God empowers us. Prepares us in a nutshell. He makes us more Christ-like. The reason that God allows delays so that we will come to him like Martha and Mary. The reason that God delay, allows delays in our life so that we will pray and seek his face earnestly. Divine delays we accept. But demonic delays we resist. We resist. Here comes the spiritual warfare. Now the question arises. When something is delayed, how can I know whether this delay is from God or from Satan? How many of you have that question? How many of you have that question? Come on, respond. See, we are talking about two kinds of delays. Divine delay on one side and the other side, demonic delays. How can we identify the difference between these two? If it is from God, God will give you the needed strength and grace to go through it, go through the process, and your life will change for the better. But if the delay is from Satan, you will be depressed. You will have doubts and fears. Sometimes if you are not careful, if you don't deal with it, it will even take you away from God. And it will change you for the worse. Now the reason I am teaching on this subject is so that you will not accept the delay the devil causes in your life Thinking it is a delay from God. Are you with me this morning? Come on, are you with me? The reason I'm urged by the Lord to teach you on the subject. So that you will not accept the delay caused by the devil. When there is a delay from the evil spirit. We should not be thinking, oh God is delaying things. No. It's like test and temptation. Test comes from the Lord. Temptation comes from the devil. Amen. Test, when God gives you test, he draws you closer. When the devil tempts you, he draws you away from God. So today I'm going to teach you how to deal with the demonic delays in your life. Today I pray to God that you will go from one level to another level in your spiritual life. We got to deal with the spirit of delay. Church, I'm really excited this morning because you will never be the same again. Believe it. Believe it with all your heart. Today God is going to detach you from what has been stopping you for all these many years. Did you hear me? Did you hear me? Activate God's word. How do you activate God's word? How do you activate God's word? Listen to thee. Listen to this very carefully. Listen to this. God is going to detach you today from those things which have been stopping you for this many years. Just stay connected with the word this morning. 
Just stay connected. There is a reason why we need to deal with the spirit of delay rather than dealing with delay itself. We don't deal with delay. We deal with the spirit of delay. A lot of people don't understand that there is always a spirit behind something. You know what Paul said to Timothy? Turn your Bibles. 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7. 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7. For God hath not given us. Come on, finish it. Everybody, everybody. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of disciplined mind. Will you read that verse again? For God, come on, as loud as possible. For God, not given us the spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a disciplined mind. You know what it means? It means before fear comes, the spirit of fear comes. Before fear comes to you, what comes? The spirit of fear comes. Fear is not fear unless the spirit of fear shows up. You know what it means? You cannot conquer. You cannot dismantle fear until you conquer the spirit behind it. How many of you know there is a spirit behind your fear? Until you conquer that spirit, you cannot conquer that fear. The spirit behind controls everything. Friend, delay is more spiritual than physical. Hence, we are called as God's people to deal with the spirit. Spirit of delay. Now, if you read the Bible very carefully... You can see a lot of illegal spiritual roadblocks. Where your blessings, where your anointing, where your grace, where your opportunities, where your possibilities are hindered and delayed. There is an evil spirit behind your delay. God is speaking. There is an evil entity. That is refusing to access. Refusing the access to the angel. That has what belongs to you. I want you to think for a moment. That entity. Evil entity is saying no. In the spiritual. So you feel. The delay. In the physical. Your delay is, did not start in the physical. Your delay is happening in the spiritual realm. So today we are going to address the spirit behind your delay. Spirit of backwardness. Spirit of stagnation. The spirit of delay does not come alone. It comes with Spirit of backwardness. It comes with a spirit of stagnation. When you delay with the mystery of delay, when you deal, when you deal with the mystery of delay, you will understand it has, it has its own byproduct, like backwardness and stagnation. Your life is stagnated. No progress. You want to move forward, but you are in the same place where you are. And God wants you to understand this morning that there is a spirit behind it, working against it. And God wants you to conquer it today in the name of Jesus. If you conquer the spirit of delay in your life, 
I tell you, you will become unstoppable in your walk with God. Amen. Let me first of all tell you what is delay. What is delay? But before that, listen to me. An enemy that you have not understood, an enemy that you have not identified is an enemy that you cannot conquer. If you have not understood or identified your enemy, you cannot conquer that enemy. The problem with many, many Christians today, they fight enemies they don't understand. They think that enemy is somebody, some brother, some sister, some man in the office, some boss in the office. No, my friend, your enemy is not your boss. Your enemy is not somebody. Your enemy is a spirit working against your progress, working against your blessing, working against your possibilities, your opportunities. Amen. Now, what is delay? Delay is when nothing in your life grows except your age. Did you hear me? What is delay? Delay is when nothing, nothing in your life grows except your age. That's the definition of delay. Delay is when nothing grows except your age. You are not growing in the wisdom. You are not growing in grace. You are not growing in the knowledge of God. But you are constantly, consistently growing in only one thing. Growing in your age. You know you are delayed when your age is the only thing that is growing in your life and nothing else. Spirit of delay. Is the greatest enemy of your progress. I've seen a lot of people with wonderful possibilities. People who have received prophecy and wonderful promises from the Lord. And yet nothing comes to fruition. Probably you have a personal word to you from God. You have a promise in your hand. You have a prophecy. Waiting to be fulfilled. But nothing is happening. So many wonderful words spoken over your life by anointed servants of God. Probably God has revealed something in your life through a dream or through a vision. But guess what? With all that, nothing, nothing is happening in your life. Nothing is materializing in your life. You know the reason, brother? Sister, do you know the reason? Spirit. Of delay. Delay is so stubborn. That unless you deal with your delay. Delay will never stop dealing with you. God wants you and me. To deal with the spirit of delay today. How many of you are ready? Come on I'm asking you. How many of you are ready? If you are willing to deal. With your spirit of delay. In the name of Jesus. Delay. Will stop dealing with you. A lot of people are denied. That which meant for them. Because they have failed. To deal with the spirit of delay. For example. Things that were supposed. To take you five years to build. Will take you 15 years. And even in that 15 years. You will be only swimming in the pool of sorrow. And misery. You take 10 steps forward. To take 50 steps backward. Even if it looks as if you are making progress. You wake up to realize. That you are not making any progress. You are in the same place where you were before. God wants us to deal with it. Let's go into the Bible. We're about to take off. You know, listen to this message very carefully. This is a prophetic message to you. Turn your Bibles. To Genesis chapter 15 and verse 13. Genesis chapter 15 and verse 13. 
I want you to understand from where it all began. Now the book of Genesis was known as the book of beginnings. Better shit. Book of Genesis is called the seed plot of the whole Bible. Genesis is the spinal cord of the Bible. Just as you cannot stand without your spinal cord, Bible cannot stand without the book of Genesis. Genesis chapter 15 and verse 13. Look in the Bible. And the Lord said unto Abraham, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs and shall serve them and they shall afflict them for how many years? 400 years. Church, this is God talking to Abraham about the children of Israel in the land of Egypt. The Lord says they are going to be afflicted. They are going to be in captivity in Egypt for how many years? 400 years. Now I want you to understand that this was not an angel speaking to Abraham. It was not even a prophet speaking to Abraham. It was not even Melchizedek speaking to Abraham. It was God himself speaking to Abraham. God was saying, Abraham, your seed, your children's children's children will be in captivity in Egypt for 400 years. God gave him a time frame. But let's see, let's see how long they stayed in Egypt. Turn your Bibles. Exodus chapter 12 and verse 40. Exodus chapter 12 and verse 40. Now the sojourning of the children of Israel who dealt in Egypt, how many years? 430 years. In Genesis 15. The Bible tells us that God said unto Abraham 400 years. In Exodus chapter 12 we read that they stayed in Egypt for how long? 430 years. Meaning they stayed 30 extra years. Brother, sister. Now 30 years is quite a very long period. 30 years is not just 30 days. 30 years is so long. That a baby can become a man. 30 years is so long that a baby can become a woman. Somebody can get their lives together in this period of 30 years. Somebody can build from nothing and move on to get something. In this 30 years period. 30 years was not necessary. These extra years, God did not announce. Some of you may think that just because God spoke, delay is going to be removed. No. Listen to me carefully. Delay loves it when God speaks. Because delay knows that it cannot stop God, but it can stop you. It can stop me. If you don't deal with it. That's the reason I told you. Unless you deal with your delay. Delay will not stop dealing with you. 30 years were stolen. From the lives of God's people. Because of the spirit of delay. Let me tell you. Why the delay took place in the lives. That's very important. Why the delay took place in the lives. They were simply delayed because when the deliverer Moses showed up, they rejected him. They rejected the deliverer. The lives were delayed for 30 years. They were simply delayed because when the deliverer Moses showed up, they rejected him. You may, you may ask me, when was it they rejected the deliverer? Remember, Moses grew up in the palace of Pharaoh. One day, he saw an Hebrew, an Egyptian, fighting with each other. Moses intervened 
and killed the Egyptian and buried him. You know why? Because Moses was a Hebrew. He was defending his own people. On the following day, Moses saw two Hebrew men fighting with each other. Moses came in to stop them from fighting. That day was the day of the deliverance. You may ask me, how do I know that? Do you know what that guy said that day? You know what that man said, Hebrew said? Don't you know what you did yesterday? We are going to mess you up. We are going to expose you. When Moses heard that, he ran from the place into the wilderness and stayed with Jethro. How long? How many years? 40 years. 40 years. So Moses was the deliverer. You know what that guy said? Who made you a deliverer over us? Who made you a deliverer over us? They rejected. God sent deliverer. They rejected. God sent answer. Now Moses had gone through wilderness, stayed with Jethro for 40 years. For 40 years. And now the time of deliverance had come. There was no deliverer. The time of deliverance had come. How many of you follow me what I'm saying? The time of deliverance had come. But there was no deliverer. Where was, where was the deliverer at the time? Where was the deliverer? In the wilderness. With Jethro. Now the deliverer is not there. Friend, listen to me. Delay can eat you up because you miss somebody who carried your deliverance. I don't know to whom God is speaking this morning. You can be delayed because you have missed somebody who carried your answer. Who carried, who carried your deliverance. Remember the Lord Jesus Christ came to Jerusalem. He wept over Jerusalem. You know why? You know what the Lord Jesus Christ said? You have missed the hour of visitation. Because you have missed the hour of visitation. Friend, there is an hour of visitation in your life. Be careful to pick it up. Don't ever miss it. It may not come again. There's an hour of visitation. Why did Jesus weep over Jerusalem? Because they missed the hour of visitation. It means there were people who were sick and Jesus' presence marked the season of their healing. But you know what they thought? This Jesus would come and pass by and another Messiah would come. That's a mistake they did. And the Lord Jesus Christ had the final answer, had the solution. I'm urged by the Lord to tell you, there are men and women whom God send your way and, and your inability to locate them, to identify them, to locate them will cause you to be in that same place where you are. Be alert. Be sober all the time. Church, God is speaking to somebody. Delay is so merciless. And no matter how long you have been delayed by delay, delay will never come and tell you, I am leaving now because I have delayed you enough. No. If you're going to show mercy to your delay, what I want to tell you is you're giving up your destiny. Don't show mercy to the spirit of delay. Not only to your destiny, but to the destiny of your children and children's children. 
when it comes to spirit of delay. Fight delay with everything that is in you. Because if you don't stop delay, delay will stop you. If you don't stop delay, delay will stop you. Some of you are fighting delay that dealt with your mother. I don't know to whom God is speaking. Some of you right now, you are fighting with your delay that dealt with your mother. I call this a delay of inherited delay. Inherited delay. There is some delay in your life, inherited. Delay does not respect your educational qualification. Your valuable certificate will turn to be an ordinary paper if you give room to the spirit of delay. Delay will make an educated man as if he had never been to any school before. Delay does not respect anointing. You can be anointed and still that can be a delay in your life if you fail to deal with that spirit behind it. No one is immune to delay. You must be able to confront it. Deal with your delay. God is speaking to you, brother. If you feel that something is being delayed inordinately in your life, you have been waiting and waiting and waiting, not for months, but for years. God is saying, my son, my daughter, I want you to deal with your delay today and I'm going to set you free. Amen. God gave a promise, rather a prophecy to Abraham, saying, Abraham, I'm going to give you a son. But it took Abraham 24 years to see that prophecy come to pass in his life. And Abraham had a baby. What was his name? Come on, quick. Isaac. Isaac. Isaac was born after 25 years. Now Isaac met Rebecca and it took Rebecca how many years? 20 years to bring forth Jacob and Esau. And later Jacob wanted to get married the woman of his heart Rachel how many years it took for her? 16 years to bring forth a child. Now if you look at this delay, it did not start with Jacob. It all started where? With Abraham. When you look at Isaac's father, he was delayed. It all started with Abraham. It took Abraham 24 years. It took Isaac 20 years. It took Jacob 16 years. Friend, God can speak to your life and still delay can refuse. Let's go to the Bible. Turn your Bibles. First Kings chapter 19. I want everybody to look at your Bibles. Don't miss this truth in your life. First Kings chapter 19. I'm reading from verse 15. First Kings chapter 19, reading from verse 15. And the Lord said unto Elijah, Go return on the way to the wilderness of Damascus. When thou comest, anoint as a hail to be the king over Syria. And Jehu the son of Nimshi shall thou anoint to be king over Israel. And Elijah the son of Shaphat of Abel, Meholah, shall thou anoint to be the prophet in thy room. And it shall come to pass that him that escaped the sword of Asahel shall Jehu slay. And him that escapeth the sword of Jehu shall Elisha slay. Now listen to me. According to God's plan, there were some events that had to take place sequentially, chronologically. Now God spoke to Elijah when Elijah was on Mount Horeb. And the Lord said, Elijah, Elijah, when you go down, I know for me as the hill as a king of Syria, anoint for me Jehu 
for Jacob to be the king over Israel. Notice here, Israel. What is Israel? Chosen nation of God. And Elijah had to anoint Elisha to be a prophet after him. God told Elijah to anoint two kings and one prophet. Bible declares that Elijah went down and did anoint Elisha to be his successor. But he forgot to anoint Jehu. Imagine God spoke. God spoke to Elijah to anoint Jehu. Elijah did anoint Elisha in his place, but he forgot to anoint Jehu. When the prophet came down, he anointed Elisha. But sorry to say, he forgot Jehu. He forgot to anoint Jehu as a king over Israel. If I want, if I meet Elijah, I want to ask him, how come? You forgot the king of Israel. How is it possible? God spoke to you very clearly. Jehu was to be anointed as a king over Israel. How can you forget this? Friend, you know what happened? It was spirit of delay working. How many of you can see that? Listen, God can release Men to bless you, but delay can take place as a result. Man who is supposed to bless you will not see you. God has appointed somebody in your life to bless you. And because of the spirit of delay, the man, the person who is supposed to bless you will not even see you. Can I be more precise? You apply for promotion or you apply for a job and the person who is supposed to approve your application will not even see your application. According to God, it's your time. But when delay fights you, delay fights everything about you. And you're wondering what's happening. What's happening? When others got the job, why not I? What's happening? Friend, spirit of delay working against you. It's not that Elijah did not hear God properly. He heard very clearly from God. To an extent, God said in verse 17, And it shall come to pass that him that escaped the sword of Asahel shall Jehu slay, and him that escaped the sword of Jehu shall Elisha slay. Instruction was very clear. Now, my brother, sister, if you're hearing me, listen, God is speaking to you. I want you to go ahead and prophetically agree with me this morning and say to your spirit of delay, enough is enough. Are you with me? Are you with me? Speak right now. Open your mouth and speak to your spirit of delay and say, it is enough. I break your power. Come on, everybody. I break the power of the spirit of delay in my life. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Come on, as loud as possible. Hallelujah. Friend, the spirit of delay is not only really working against you, it's working against your children. It's working against your children's children. It's working against all those who are connected to you. It could be anybody. It could be anybody. Take the authority in the name of Jesus this morning. 
This morning, we come against the spirit of delay in the name of Jesus Christ who died and rose again victoriously. We paralyze the spirit of delay this morning. We dismantle the spirit of delay this morning. We render the spirit of delay powerless in Jesus' name. Somebody say amen. amen. Delay can persist. Delay can persist till you resist. Till you resist. The devil will say, this delay is normal. Don't worry, it will happen. It will happen. Don't worry. It will happen. This is quite normal. But I tell you this morning, the devil is a liar. Imagine Elijah missing the king of Israel. Jehu was not to be anointed as a servant. He was to be anointed as a king. And this was the word of the Lord to Elijah. The Lord said, go and anoint Chegu to be the king over Israel. It's not that Elijah did not like the nation of Israel. That will make some sense. But Elijah was a prophet to the nation of Israel. Amen. How come he can forget? How come? How come? How come he forgot the king of Israel? Two years, nothing happened. Five years gone by, nothing happened. Seven years gone by, nothing happened. You know what? Now Elijah was taken up to heaven by the chariot of fire in a whirlwind knowing he was supposed to anoint Chegu as a king over Israel. He went to heaven without anointing Chegu. I want you to think, brother, Sister, I want you to think. Jehu had a wonderful prophecy upon his life. He had a wonderful promise upon his life. But nothing, nothing happening. Nothing happening. The anointing for the king had not come upon him. Prophecy is there. Prof promise is there. But the anointing had not come upon him. Jehu probably knew that he was born to be a king. I don't know. Probably he felt that something going wrong in his life. Maybe he was like some of us thinking it was normal delay. Friend, the delay that is happening in your life is not normal. Wake up. Wake up. Young man, young woman, Wake up! The delay that is happening in your life is not normal. There is a spirit behind it. Amen. God wants to break that spirit. How many of you are ready? How many of you are really ready? How many of you are really ready? Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Can you just imagine? The man was supposed to anoint Jehu as a king over Israel. I'd gone to heaven. I'd gone to heaven. Without anointing him. Guess what? After 14 years. Listen to me. After 14 years. The Bible says. Elisha. Remembered the prophecy. That was given by God to Elijah. Concerning Chegu. After how many years? 14 years. What was happening? In these 14 years. Come on. What was happening? Spirit of delay working. After 14 years. Elisha was reminded by the Spirit of God. About the prophecy. That God gave him to heal. God gave Elisha concerning Chegu. And it took Elisha to anoint Chegu as a king over Israel. I want you to think now. Elisha was the same person who was to be anointed in the same season with Shegu. Am I right? But one is far behind and the other one is far before. 
What is the reason? What is the reason? It took Elisha 14 years to remember that there was a prophecy, there was a promise over this man called Chegu. Now Elisha went and appointed one of the sons of the prophets and said, take this flask of oil and anoint this Chegu. But may I present to you this morning, friend, delay can frustrate somebody. I know in my spirit, you are frustrated, you are dejected, you are depressed because something is delayed in your life and you don't know the reason. Today God is telling you the reason for your delay. You are seeing the delay but you have never seen the spirit behind it. Today, God wants you to see the spirit behind it. Are you with me? Are you with me? When you see the fingerprint of the devil in your delay, don't take it as normal. Rise up in your spirit. Take the authority in the name of Jesus and confront the spirit of delay. And I tell you in Jesus' name, that spirit shall be paralyzed in your life. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I prophesy in the name of Jesus that some of you are operating outside your assignment today not because of inefficiency, not because of the lack of qualification, not because of anything else, but because of the spirit of delay. You are operating outside your assignment. You are operating outside your predestined assignment. Not because of anything else, but because of the spirit of delay. I want you to think. Remember, Jehu was to be anointed as a king over Israel. Do you know something? Jehu was to be anointed as a king when Elisha was anointed to be the successor of Elijah. Am I right? Are you with me? Jehu was to be anointed as a king. When brother? When Elisha was anointed to be the successor of Elijah. But Jehu got so frustrated, so depressed because of the spirit of delay. You know what? He joined the army of Agab as a soldier. How many of you know God is speaking? Because of the frustration, because of the dejection, because of the spirit of delay, this man got so depressed and frustrated, he didn't know what to do. He joined the army of Ahab as what? As a soldier. A man who was supposed to be the king, now working as a soldier in the army of Ahab. Is that you, brother? Is that you, sister? You are supposed to be somewhere else. You are supposed to be somebody. But you are nobody today. Nobody today. You are not in the place where you are supposed to be. But you have taken it as so normal. And you are so passive. You have accepted it. You have accepted it. As normal. God says wake up. Wake up from your sleep. I have a great plan for you. I have a great plan for you. The life that you are living today. Is not the life that God has planned for you. You have to be somewhere else. Chegu was so frustrated. Do you know what? 
Today, because of the spirit of delay, how many destinies were de redirected because of delay? How many destinies were re-returned because of delay? Listen to me carefully. Listen to me carefully. When God reminded Elisha about the prophecy that was upon Shigu, you know what Elisha said? Turn your Bible. Turn your Bibles. Turn your Bibles. Second Kings. Chapter 9. And verse 3. Second Kings. Chapter 9 and verse 3. Then take the flask of oil. Pour it on his head and say. Thus say the Lord. I have anointed you. King over Israel. Then open the door and flee and do not delay. Do not delay. Who said this to whom? Elisha speaking to one of the sons of the prophets. He says, take the oil in flask of oil. And pour it on the head of Jehu and say, Thus say the Lord, I have anointed you as king over Israel. Open the door and flee and do not delay. Church, remember the prophecy. The promise was given in 1st King chapter 19. When it was fulfilled, where it was fulfilled. Where was it fulfilled? Come on. 2 Kings chapter 9. 14 years ago. Note the phrase. Open the door and flee and do not delay. Why? Because already there was a delay. Already there was a delay. Friend, I tell you, spirit of delay is very dangerous. Do you know something? Hell cannot agree with you and say yes to your blessing. Delay, spirit of delay will fight against you. You know what David has? How long, O oh Lord? How long, O oh Lord? I tell you, nothing wrong in asking God that this morning. How long? How long will my suffering continue? How long the same situation of mine continue? How long I will be in the same state? When you ask this question, you are addressing directly the spirit of delay. Amen. Amen. By this time, you should not be working there. You should be somewhere else. By this time, you should not be like this today, what you are. Amen. How many of you are ready? How many of you are ready this morning to come against the spirit of delay in your life? How many of you are ready? How many of you are ready? I feel the heavy unction of the Holy Ghost. God is going to set you free this morning. Believe, believe. Hallelujah. What stopped your mother cannot stop you. Come against the spirit of backwardness. The spirit of stagnation in your life. You want to do many things. But you are not doing anything. You are not doing anything. You are not able to do anything. You aspire many things. You wonderful. You have wonderful ambition in life. You are struggling. You are toiling. Nothing is happening. Friend, as God spoke when I tell you, the spirit of delay is working against you all these many years. And if you listen to this message, if you agree with me in your spirit and rise up to the occasion and take authority in Jesus' name and begin to speak to your spirit of delay, today God is ready to break that spirit. On your behalf. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I feel God's mighty presence. Is there anybody worried about time? Anybody worried about time? Come on, I'm asking you. Thank you. Thank you. Can I tell you something? Listen to this very carefully. This will be an eye opener to you. There is always a transition between creation and formation. Are you listening? Come on, I'm asking you. There is a transition between creation and formation. If you understand this truth, your life will never be the same again. Creation is here. Formation is here. In between creation and formation, there is a transition. There is a transition. When I say transition, I mean a shift, a paradigm shift, a change, a process, a process, a process. Amen. I told you two things. One is creation. Other one is formation. You know what is creation? Creation is to make something out of nothing. What is creation? To make something out of nothing. In Latin, they call it creatio ex nigailo. Creatio ex nigailo. But formation is to make something out of something. Tell me, what is formation? Formation is to make something out of something. What is creation? To make something out of nothing. What is formation? To make something out of something. I think I've already taught you this in one of our special Bible studies in the evening. Amen. Now I want you to see this in the scripture. Turn your Bibles. But before that, listen to me. Each one of you, you were created before you were formed. Rather, before you were formed, you were created. Are you listening? You were formed, brother. You were formed before you were created. Now look at your Bible. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 27. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 27. So God created. Underline that word in your Bible. God created. Bara. Bara. The Hebrew word bara. Created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Created. What's the Hebrew word there? Bara. Created. Now turn your Bibles. Genesis chapter 2 verse 7. Genesis chapter 2 verse 7. And the Lord God... Formed, underline that word formed, Yatsa, Yatsa, formed. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. Man became Nishmat Chaim, living soul. Now listen, now listen. In Genesis 1, Adam was created out of Nothing created. Created means creation means what? To make something out of nothing. Adam was created out of nothing as what? As a spirit being. As a spirit being. Only his spirit being was created. Listen to me. Only his spirit being was created 
in the likeness and the image of God. Not his physical form in Genesis 2. I know some people ask me, if God had created man in his own likeness and image, did, did, does it mean God has an image? They ask this because they are ignorant. If God has created man in his own image, does God have an image? No, my friend, God is a spirit. This likeness and image of God was only in the spirit man, Adam. Not in the physical form of that man. Now the order is important. God created spirit man first. And then... The physical man. First God created the spirit man in Genesis 1.1. Cretio ex nigailo. And then in chapter 2. God formed the spirit. God gave the spirit man a body. A physical form. Don't ever change this divine order please. Many people make a mistake. Spirit man first, physical man second. Don't reverse this order. Don't ever give more importance to your physical body than your spiritual man. The divine order is spirit, soul and body. Now in Genesis 1, man was created. But in Genesis 2, come on. Man was formed. Do you know something? Do you know to whom God gave the dominion? To spirit man or physical man? To spirit man. God never gave dominion to the physical man. In Genesis 1.28, God blessed him. God gave him dominion to rule over anything, everything. Hallelujah. I want to present it to you that was not in Genesis 2 that God gave dominion to man. It was in Genesis chapter 1 that God gave dominion to the spirit man. That's why if your spiritual man is not okay, you cannot have dominion over anything. Do you know why you're leading a defeated Christian life? Do you know why you're not able to take dominion over your sin, your temptation? It's because your spirit man is weak, lost the dominion. But your physical man trying to take dominion, it doesn't work that way, my friend. How many of you understand the importance of your spirit man? That's the reason it's very, very important to strengthen your spirit man, your inner man, your spiritual man. Amen. In other words, dominion only to spirit man in Genesis 1 and not to physical man in Genesis 2. So God can say, now listen, now listen. God says, my son, you are this in creation. And you are this in your formation. In your creation, you are different. In your formation, you are somebody else. And there is a transition. This is called discipleship. This is called process. This is called spiritual operation. When you yield yourself to God so that you will, you know, from the position of formation, you will once again come to the place of creation and you become the person of whom God has created you to be. How many of you understand what I'm saying? Church, I'm talking something very important. So God says this morning, my child, you are this in your creation and you are this in your formation. When you're born, when you're formed, or when you're born in your family, you're something different. 
but God created you as a different person. But when you're born in your family, you're something different. You may ask me, Pastor, can you substantiate this with the scripture, with the Bible? Let me tell you, David was created to be the king. David was created to be the king. Only two people in the Bible, they were born as kings. Born as kings. One was the Lord Jesus Christ. The wise men asked in Matthew chapter 2, Where is he who is born? Come on. The king of the Jews. The second person was born as a king. Can you make a guess? David. Look at the Bible. Matthew's Gospel chapter 1 verse 6. Matthew's Gospel chapter 1 verse 6. Matthew's Gospel chapter 1 verse 6. Jesse begat David the... You cannot see this with anybody else. David was born as a king. And Jesse begat David the king. David the king begat Solomon. Now listen to me. When God looked at David in creation, who was David? David was a king. God saw David in a palace. But when the formation took place, when David was born in the family of Jesse, who was he? A shepherd boy in the wilderness. His destiny says he is a king. But his formation status to look after the sheep, few sheep in the wilderness. It took a man called prophet Samuel to announce David saying, David, you are not supposed to be where you are now. According to God's calendar, this year you have to be anointed as a king over Israel. He has never been in a palace before. His father was not a king. He does not know how to command or order like a king. He does not know how to speak like a king. But then... God sent prophet Samuel to anoint him. And the anointing gives the ability to function as a king. Anointing. So what happened here? Are you able to follow me? Samuel did not anoint David to become a king just because David was a shepherd boy. No. David in creation was a king. Amen. But in the formation, he was ordinary shepherd boy. How many of you are under the influence of my voice this morning? How many of you know God is speaking to you? Brother, sister, in creation, you are somebody else. But you're born in a family and you're somebody else right now. Somebody, you're different. But God's plan is different. God wants you to become the person whom God had created you to be. How many of you understand? How many of you understand? God is speaking to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In the formation, David was an ordinary shepherd. Friend, there is a transition between creation and formation. I always think of Jabez. Jabez refused to be somebody, someone ordinary in the family. He refused to be someone ordinary in the family. You know, Bible says, Jabez prayed a prayer. Why did he pray that prayer? He said, Lord, you have to bless me. Enlarge my borders. Do something. Change me. The Bible says God heard the prayer of Jabez and made him more honorable than all his brethren. Amen. God says something to Jeremiah. 
The Lord said unto Jeremiah, Jeremiah, I knew you even before you were formed in your mother's womb. Even before you were formed in your mother's womb, in your formation, you are an ordinary man. But I finished you in creation to be a prophet. I have created you to be a prophet. But in your formation, you appear to be an ordinary person. Ordinary person. But I finished. I am done with you. Even before you were born. Even before you were formed. I created you as somebody else. Hallelujah. And God says to Jeremiah, I want to make sure that you are aware of what I have put in you even before you were born. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And I want to tell you as a servant of God, listen, brother, sister, in creation, God sees you as a different person. I don't know as what. God knows it. In creation, you are a different person. But in formation, you are something else. And I'm urged by the Lord to tell you this morning, in creation, you're not an ordinary person like you are today. In creation, you're not barren. In creation, you're not jobless. In creation, you're not a borrower. In creation, you are not sick. You are not barren. You are not weak. You are not with the setbacks. You're not insignificant. In creation, you're blessed with all spiritual, heavenly blessings. In creation, you're a blessed man. You're a blessed woman. In creation, you're an extraordinary person. In creation, you're a person of excellence. So it is God's plan that you should become the person whom God has created you to be. How many of you believe? How many of you believe? And this is the transition period. God is saying you're going through a transition period. You're going through a process. A process of becoming a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now listen, I'm coming to the most important part. This is where, this is where the spirit of delay takes advantage of your life. This is where the spirit of delay begins to work against your life. When God is working on you, listen brother please, please, please don't miss it. When God is working on you toward the process of bringing you from the formation to the place where God had created you. To make you that person whom God had created it, you to be. This is where the spirit of delay begins to work in your life. Can I tell you more precisely? Listen. This is where the spirit of delay will not allow you to know God in a personal way. This is where the spirit of delay will not allow you to yield yourself fully to God. This is the place the spirit of delay will not allow you to surrender your life totally to God. This is the place where the spirit of delay will not allow you to get up early in the morning and pray and worship God. This is the place where the spirit of delay will not allow you to spend substantial quality time with God's word. This is the time the spirit of delay will not allow you to attend the Bible studies. Come on, are you understanding something? It is God's plan concerning you to make you the person whom God has created you to be. Today, from today, ask God, why have you created me? 
Lord, I am formed like this. I am born as so and so in my family, but I know this is not the purpose for which I am formed. I am, I am in this world for the purpose for which you have created me. Come on, are you with me? Don't be satisfied with your formation. God is saying, my son, my daughter, don't be satisfied in the place where you are formed. I have not called you to settle down in the place where you are formed, but I want you to come to a place of creation where I want you to be. Amen. How many of you know the spirit of delay is working against? How often the spirit of delay, when you wanted to pray, spirit of delay did not allow you to pray. When you wanted to come closer to God, when you want to live holy, that spirit of delay dragged you back. When you wanted to get up early in the morning, spend time praising and worshiping God, it was a spirit that was working against you to, to spend you know, more time sleeping. Friend, how many of you ready today to fight against the spirit? Come on, let's stand up to our feet. You are in a process. You are under a divine process. You are under a divine process. Maybe because of ignorance. Either too, you have accepted your delay. But the Lord says, my son, my daughter, I want you to take authority in my name and resist the spirit of delay in your life. It could be anything. Can I tell you for your better understanding? Every eye closed, everybody, everyone, even if you're on the ground floor. You may be more gifted, more talented than somebody. That person, less talented, less gifted than you. But that person is successful. You are not. Why? Why? Did he ever ask that question? You are a good singer. God has given you that gift. But only you, only you, you are listening to your singing, nobody else. Other person who is less gifted than you, thousands of viewers and listeners, why? Have you ever asked that question? You are trying to do something, nothing works. You are working so hard. Nothing seems to come to fruition. But somebody else not doing anything, prospering, prospering, successful, moving forward, but you're toiling. You're working so hard. You're in the same place where you were. Why? Have you ever asked that question? Jesus, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, thank you, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord. God says, my child, the life that you're living now is not the life that I have created you to be. I have a different plan, I have a different pur purpose concerning your life. But because you have not dealt with the spirit of delay, the spirit of delay had delayed you many things in your life. But today I am opening your spiritual eyes to understand, to understand what's happening to understand what's happening in your life. 
And I have given you the power and authority in my name. You have failed to use it. You have failed to exercise the power and authority in my name. And I want you to exercise the power and authority I have given you in my name today. And resist the spirit of delay. And the Lord says, I will break that evil yoke from off your shoulders today. The thing which has stopped you for many years can never stop you anymore. The evil entity that hath ended your life either too shall not hinder you anymore. I am releasing you, say the Lord. I am releasing you. I am detaching you from those things which had stopped you for many years now. But I want you to take authority in my name. You are my child. The Lord says, you are my child. You are the child of the Most High God. Don't forget. I am everything to you. I am everything to you. Thank you Holy Spirit. Many times you try to do something. And you are not able. You try to fix up one thing. Something else goes wrong. All the time something is going wrong in your life. And you are thinking it as normal. This morning the Holy Spirit says, wake up. It's not normal. It's not normal. It's a spirit behind. Why your son is not blessed? Why your daughter is not blessed? When other children are blessed, why not your son? Why not your daughter? Thank you, Holy Spirit. When others are coming up, why not you? Thank you, Holy Spirit. The kingdom of God suffers violence. And by violence, take it by force. Violence, take it by force. God wants you to exert spiritual force, spiritual power, this morning to resist the spirit of delay and say, you spirit of delay, you have deceived me all these many years, but today I know, today I know what you have done in my life. I have no place for you. Pack your bags and go. Never ever come back to me. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I feel the marvelous, hallelujah, anointing of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is deliverance. There is deliverance. Brother, today is your day of deliverance. Sister, today is a day of deliverance. Today is a day of deliverance. I've been delivered, oh praise the Lord. I've been delivered by His word. Chains of death are broken. I've been delivered, oh praise the Lord. Hallelujah.
changing me, yes, you're changing me. I am so happy, and I am so free. He brought me out of bondage into liberty. Oh, 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 oh. there's a big change. That's a big change. There's a big change in yes. me. Heavenly Father, we praise and thank you this morning. Thank you for your presence. Thank you, Lord, for your deliverance. Lord, we feel delivered in our spirit. Thank you, Lord, for delivering your people. Thank you, God, for your mighty hand of deliverance. You're a God who delivered the people of Israel out of Egypt with your outstretched arm. And we believe this morning that you have delivered your people with that same outstretched arm this morning. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. May your people leave your sanctuary rejoice. And may your people see the fruit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the days to come, Master, that they'll, Master, that they will experience marvelous victory. Victory after victory, God. No more defeat, no more failure, no more setbacks, no more stagnation, no more backwardness, but only progress in Jesus' name. Commit them into your hands. We must decrease, you must increase. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise. We ask all these things in the wonderful name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. May the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, the fellowship, and the sweet coming in of the Holy Spirit, Rest and abide with each one of us this day till the Lord Jesus Christ comes. Amen. amen and amen. Hope you have been blessed to the preaching of God's word today. Our Sunday church service timings are as follows. Our English service commences at 7 a.m. A Tamil service at 10.30 a.m. A Bible study, it's a bilingual service, commences at 6.30 p.m. Our church addresses Apostolic Christian Assembly, Perambur Ministries, 74 Bellat Street, Agaram, Chennai 82. For personal prayer, kindly contact us at the following numbers 95662622203 or 9551648083 or 9941447894. Our church landline number is 044-2670-3685 For more messages, visit our YouTube channel, ACA Permal Ministries. Our church website is www.acapermalministries.org May God bless you.